In this video, we'll be focusing on solving physics problem of circular motion and gravitation. So this is for HL paper 1 question. Um, which single condition enables Newton's universal law of gravitation to be used to predict force between Earth and Sun? So option A says the Earth and the Sun both has a very large radius. And B says the distance between the two objects is approximately constant. C says they have very large mass, and D says they can be seen as point mass. So D is the only correct answer. So for Newton's law of universal of gravitation, it says that this law can be used to predict the force between two objects if and only if the two objects can be seen as point mass. So D is correct. The magnitude of the potential at the surface is V. What is the escape velocity speed from the surface of the planet? So escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2g m over r. So m is the object um, that, that, that you are escaping from. For example, if this is sun and we send out a ball, then sun is the object the ball is trying to escape. Right. And potential is equal to negative gm over r. Right. So to write um, your escape speed in terms of potential, you want this thing here to be positive. So I'm just going to write v is equal to gm over r. Then our escape velocity is going to be equal to the square root of the square root of two times the potential. So B is the correct answer. An object rotate in a horizontal circle when acted on by a centripetal force F. What is the centripetal force act? Uh, acting on the object when the radius of the circle doubles and the connected energy of the object is divided by 2. So centripetal force is equal to mass times velocity squared over r. So when radius is divided by 2, uh, I mean when radius is multiplied by 2, the centripetal force will be divided by 2, right? So let's, let me wrote this as half sub 2, so this is equal to a half times half, so it's divided by 2 here. But what about the connected energy? So initial kinetic energy is equal to a half times mass times initial velocity score, and then for final kinetic energy, um, the kinetic energy is divided by 2, and it is equal to a half times mass times your final velocity. So your final velocity score is equal to uh, your kinetic energy over 4m here. So this is your final uh, velocity score. And for your initial velocity, is equal to 2 times your kinetic energy. Divided by mass, right? So from here, we can see the velocity score is divided by 2. And if your velocity here is divided by 2, right? If your velocity here is divided by 2, uh, to be more accurate, your velocity score is divided by 2. Then here is going to be equal to mv square over 4 times radius, right? And from this initial centripetal force to this centripetal force, the whole thing is divided by 2. So A is the correct answer. A car travels in a horizontal circle at a constant speed. At any instant, the resultant force acting on the object is y. So, a uh, centripetal force is also equal to net force. 
So your resultant force is equal to uh, centripetal force, and the direction of centripetal force is always directed towards the center of the circle. So D is the correct answer. The center of Earth is separated from the center of Moon by a distant D. Point P lies on a line joining the center of Earth and the center of the Moon. A distant x from the center of Earth, the gravitational field at P is zero. What is the ratio of mass of the Moon over mass of the Earth? So gravitation gravitational field strains is equal to uh, capital G, so G constant times mass over R squared, right? So here it says the field strain is equal to zero. So field strain by Earth must be equal to field strain by Moon. So we can write the equation here. So gravitational field strain by Earth is equal to your G constant multiply by the mass of Earth divided by the distance between point P and Earth, which is equal to um, x squared, uh, and gravitational field strains by Moon is equal to G constant times the mass of the Moon divided by uh, the distance between the Moon and point P, which is equal to D minus x, and we need the square, so it's equal to D minus x square. And now we can cancel out some number here, right? So G constant on both sides cancel out. So now we can have um, the ratio. So mass moon over mass of Earth is gonna be equal to D minus X square over X square. So A is the correct answer. A particle of mass m is moving with a constant is moving with a constant speed in a uniform circular motion. What is the total work done by the centripetal force during one revolution? So work done is equal to your force times displacement travel, right? And because one revolution, if your starting point is here, your ending point is also here. So displacement. is equal to zero. So your work is also equal to zero. So A is the answer. Another way to think about this is this. It says it's uniform circular motion, so your velocity is constant. And work done by centripetal force is equal to a change in kinetic energy. And if your velocity remains constant, then your change in kinetic energy is equal to zero as well. So A must be the correct answer. A small ball of weight W is attached to a string and moved in a vertical circle of radius R. What is the smallest kinetic energy of the ball at position X for the ball to maintain the circular motion with radius R? So uh, you can see that position X is at the circle's lowest point, and you want to calculate its minimum kinetic energy. So to do this problem, we can calculate as in minimum velocity at the top of the circular first. So we know at the top of the circle, the ball receives a gravitational force by Earth and normal force. So gravitational force plus normal force is going to be equal to its centripetal force. And because we want to calculate um, their minimum velocity, so we set the normal force equal to zero. So mg is going to be equal to mv score divided by r. So v top score is going to be equal to gr. And this equation is very important. So if you can memorize this equation, it's going to be very convenient for you when you are solving your paper 2 question or paper 1 question. And by using this equation here, we can also calculate um, velocity at point x. 
by using conservation of energy. So initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy is equal to final kinetic energy plus final um, potential energy. So change in potential energy is equal to uh, negative um, k is equal to um, negative change in kinetic energy, right? So I'm, j I'm just going to write initial kinetic energy minus kinetic, final kinetic energy. And here, you know this equation here. So change in potential energy is equal to uh, mg times 2r. So 2r means 2 times the radius, which is equal to the diameter of the circle, which is equal to um, the ball's change in um, vertical displacement. And their change in kinetic energy is just equal to initial um, velocity score, which is equal to velocity at point x. So vx score minus velocity at the top. So is equal to gr. And now we can cancel out um, on both sides. I mean, we get the equation of 2gr is equal to a half times vx squared minus gr. So 4gr is equal to vx squared minus gr. So vx squared is equal to 5gr, right? And this is the velocity at point x. So the kinetic energy is going to be equal to a half times the ball's mass times vx score, which is equal to a half times m times 5 gr. And this is equal to 5 mg divided by 2 multiplied by r. And mg is equal to w is equal to weight. So this is going to be equal to 5 times weight divided by 2 multiplied by R. So R is a radius. So in this problem, they use capital R. Um, so the answer is D. An object of mass and moving a horizontal circle of radius R with a constant speed. What's the rate at work at, at what's the rate at which work is done by the centripetal force? So we know. Um, work done by centripetal force is equal to zero since there is no change in kinetic energy since in uniform circular motion um, object maintain a constant velocity so work is equal to zero so the rate of work done is also equal to zero so the answer is d an astronaut of mass 16 kilogram on the board of the international space station which is in low orbit or around the Earth. The gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and the astronaut is approximately equal to what? So you can approximate their uh, force by using this formula. So this is mass is 16 kilogram times gravitational acceleration, which is equal to 10 meter per second square. So this is just equal to 600. So the answer is D. The Earth is a distant r sub x from the Sun. The Moon is a distant r sub m from the Earth. The ratio of gravitational field strain at Earth due to Sun over gravitational field strain at Earth due to Moon is proportional to what? Uh, so here, you just need to think about proportionality. So gravitational field strains at Earth due to Sun, or gravitational field strains at Earth due to Moon is equal to uh, the capital G, G constant time mass of Earth over their radius, which is equal to um, Rs squared divided by um, G constant times mass of Earth divided by their distance score, so rm score, and this is equal to uh, g m over rs score multiply 
So multiply this quantity here. And now you can cancel all this stuff here. So it's just going to be equal to rm square over rs square. Right? So a, sorry. So which is the correct answer? Um, so d is the correct answer. The acceleration of free fall of a mass of 2.0 kg close to the surface of Mars is equal to 3.6 meter per second squared. What is the gravitational field strain at the surface of Mars? So here, gravitational field strains. So gravitational field strain basically is equal to uh, the acceleration um, gravitational acceleration by a object or by a planet so it's equal to 3.6 so if you don't see why think about um, newton's universal law of gravitation so it's equal to g multiplied by um uh, so object one over um r squared times object two right and here this part here is equal to the gravitational field strains and you can think about Newton's second law. Um, it says the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if an object receives a force of gravity, and here it will be its mass, and here it's gonna be its, its acceleration, right? Uh, so this part here, gravitational field strength, is gonna be equal to their gravitational acceleration. And this is uh, a more general form of how to calculate gravitational force when an object is very close to the surface of a planet. Particle P is moving with a uniform speed in a horizontal circle. Which of the following shows the correct direction of the acceleration A and the velocity um, P, V of P at the position shown? So before um, we solve this question, you need to know that uh, your velocity is always tangent to your acceleration. Um, right. Your velocity is always tangent to your acceleration or your radius. And your acceleration always point to the center. So you need to know um, those two statements before you solve this problem. So here, um, obviously, this is wrong because acceleration and um, velocity is tangent to each other. And B is correct because your acceleration is pointing to the center and your velocity is tangent to the acceleration. Here is wrong because your acceleration should be pointing to the center. And this one is also wrong. Your acceleration needs to point to your center and your velocity is tangent to your acceleration. So B is the correct answer.